Well, back here in Germany, the German president, Frank Walter Steinmeier, today said that Germany needs to take responsibility for its colonial past. He made the comment at the opening of two new exhibitions at Berlin's Humboldt Forum Museum Complex. The exhibits contain about 20,000 African and Asian artifacts, and the origins of some of those objects are controversial. Expressive faces decorated with thousands of colourful beads adorn the king's throne from Cameroon. It's one of the most spectacular exhibits and one that shows how difficult it is to handle objects from the colonial era. It was a gift from the Sultan to the Kaiser, but how freely given are gifts to a colonial master? Then there's the large boat from Luf Island in what's now Papua New Guinea. 130 years old, 15 metres long, that's without doubt. But was it really bought in 1903 in the colony of German New Guinea? There's no evidence it was. Many of the 3,000 objects shown here have an equally unclear history, but clarifying their origins, as President Steinmeier said in his opening address, is not the sole task of museums. Essentially, it's about our self-image, our responsibility before history. We, and by that I mean Europeans as a whole, will have to overcome established thought patterns and encourage ourselves to perceive and accept other perspectives. The Humboldt Forum Museums are taking on the task. The history of the artefacts is explained in booklets and online. The museums also want to showcase the great artistic and cultural significance of works from Africa, Asia and Oceania, such as the 1,400-year-old cave paintings from Kuka on the Silk Road, which are on display in a specially designed room. Well, the opening of the Humboldt Forum comes as Namibia debates whether or not to accept a 1 billion euro offer from Germany to compensate for colonial era atrocities. Germany is seeking to atone for its genocide against the Herero and Name people in the first decade of the last century. Yesterday, 300 protesters climbed the fences of Parliament to express their anger over the compensation plan. They say the proposal is a sellout and does not effectively address the atrocities of German colonialism. The parliamentary debate on the agreement is expected to be voted on in the coming days. Germany's foreign minister, Heiko Maas, says that Germany stands by its offer of compensation, and he says he hopes Namibia will ratify the agreement. We negotiated for a very, very long time, over many years, and the results that have been achieved have been achieved in the spirit of finally arriving at a result, not a conclusion, in this really difficult chapter of German history. Because it's actually just the beginning of a very, very intensive collaboration between Germany and Namibia. I would like it to be seen that way in Namibia, but ultimately, that's a decision that will be made in Namibia. So, from possibly looted artifacts to the horror of colonialism, how much should Germany pay and will it ever be enough? For more on this, we're joined tonight by Joshua Kwesi Akins. Joshua is a political scientist and a human rights activist. Joshua, it's good to have you on the program. I mean, where do we begin here? This is such a deeply sensitive issue. How can Germany right the wrongs of its colonial past and genocide? Um, will money be enough? Well, certainly not. I mean, in looking at Namibia, it's very clear that um, three things are required, right? There has to be full recognition of the genocide, there has to be restitution of human remains because thousands of um, human remains, skulls that were acquired in the course of genocide are still um, here in Germany. Um, and of course, there have to be reparations. And unfortunately, we just heard Heiko Maas, the foreign minister, speak about the fact that he doesn't want uh, you know, this to be uh, the final stop, but the beginning of a process. Unfortunately, the German offer uh, is really structured in such a way that um, no further recompense will be possible after this money is being paid. And the key issue, the key criticism here is that representatives of the groups of survivors of the Nama and the Herero mm -hmm. have not been present in these negotiations. So uh, the people that were wronged are not part of the process of righting that wrong. And this clearly shows that, um, yeah, I would say a colonial um, continuity can be seen in the way that the German government refuses to directly engage with um, those whose forebears, whose ancestors have been wronged have been murdered and have been driven off their ancestral land in Namibia. Well, Joshua, do we know why representatives of the Herero and the Nama people have not been included in, in these negotiations? I mean, it, one would think that they would be the first people to be invited. 
that's exactly the issue here. Um, you see, uh, I mean, the African continent was divided right here in Berlin, right? And now the German government says, well, um, given those borders, we can only negotiate with the Namibian government, which of course is uh, very convenient for the German government since the Namibian government has very few uh, Herero and Nama representatives among them. But of course, if you look into German history, we notice that after the Second World War, Germany was able to negotiate not just with the state of Israel, but with a plethora of Jewish diasporan groups, which was key um, in achieving uh, you know, a recompense for uh, the Holocaust. And so there's a clear historical precedent, and that's why uh, people in Namibia say it must be possible for Germany to speak with us directly too. There is also the subject of artifacts that are believed to have been given to Germany, that that's being debated. How easy is it to prove that art and other valuables were not looted? Well, this is, of course, um, a tricky issue. However, if we look more closely um, in, you know, um, the previous video, it was clearly stated that we're talking about 10,000s of objects. The key issue here is not whether a few of them might have been gifted or not. The key issue is that it's on record that 10,000s have directly been looted. Um, there's documentation of that. And there are 10,000s of others where the circumstances are not clear. And so one of the key criticisms lobbied against the Humboldt Forum is that here we have the biggest cultural project in Europe, um, 600 million euro were spent on erecting um, this museum. But um, scant resources have been made available to actually research into the provenience of the objects that are going to go on display there. And that's a clear discrepancy. And that is why communities literally from around the world are saying, you cannot put our heritage on display. You must put money into researching how this even got to Berlin. Joshua Kowesi Akins, we appreciate your time and your analysis, valuable insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.